Thank you. Uh, this week we do have a few things going on that uh, you probably already know about, but uh, keep those before you. Nurture and Outreach Ministry will be meeting Tuesday. Uh, the Women's Circles will be meeting on Thursday. Of course, Awaken and Confirmation. Well, confirmation, actually, you can pencil out this week because unless... Oh, no, well, I guess... I'm sorry. I'm going off on a rabbit trail. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna, I told the kids I wouldn't be here this Wednesday because I had a commitment to a, a eighth grade promotion, but I uh, had, had mentioned to them that uh, they could all, some of them like to golf, I understand. I said, well, they could all golf uh, that afternoon and evening. And the incentive I tried to give them was one of the things they're supposed to be working on is some scripture memory. And I said, for every scripture verse you can recall from memory, you can take a stroke off. <laughs> but uh, I don't think that was enough motivation for them from what I gather. <laughs> uh, anyway, any other special announcements? Well, I'm going to take my mask off today, so that's a change. I'm a show far. And and please don't take that wrong. I I don't mean to by any means to suggest anything uh, untoward. Y'all know we're going through transition, of course, and um, Nancy and I both have, and I feel like I'm talking about my dog or my cows or something, we both have had our shots for a couple of months now, um, but we'll be continuing to wear our masks, see Nancy still is, but as we're close to folks, and uh, just encourage you, of course, to be sensitive to those folks around us that maybe still have it had a chance to be vaccinated, or folks who have ongoing health issues that continue to make them more sensitive. So uh, it's kind of an awkward place to be, but at the same time, every day is a new day, is it not? So we're going to move forward and continue to be faithful to one another and to the Lord our God. So let's enjoy our prayer as we begin worship.
Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Denise Kramer. Um, as I was sitting up here, when you sit up here, you get a different, a different view of the of the church, and it's it's great to look up at our beautiful windows. And you all can see this one, the windows in there, but it, it's a wonderful way to put us in uh, that frame and mode of worship. And uh, it's just it's great that wherever we look in our church, we can, we can see that. If you would join me then in the responsive reading. And while they were gazing into heaven, as he went, behold, two men stood by, stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who is taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Now if you would stand and join in the hymn from all that dwell below the skies. Shifted away from the pandemic, we 
realize that there are other things for which we need to be lifting up folks in prayer. So we ask you to continue to remember those that you know who are facing challenges. Facing the school year, continue to pray for our teachers and our students, or even the ones that are a bit rambunctious, especially the ones that are a bit rambunctious. All the staff. Are there other special concerns that we were not aware of that we should lift up this morning? Yes, Marcia. Uh, my friend, uh, Lori, Lori Gonzalez, the daughter of John Douglas. Uh, she's having a stem cell transplant this week, which involves the uh, high dose of chemo to get ready for it and an isolation. It'll be a five to six week process. So we need to keep her in our prayers. I sent out an email on the UNW prayer chain. Okay, well, thank you. So, John and Karen's daughter, Lori Gonzalez, yes. will be having a stem cell transplant. So, please be remembering her during this time and over the next several weeks. Yes, Dale. From the age perspective, there are several people that uh, are in need of prayer that are looking at replant. And of course, it is wearing our nerves on trying to finish the planting the first time, too. Absolutely. Continue to be in prayer for those who are seeking to finish up with the planting and deal with any necessary uh, replanting. And for everyone who's out running around, continue to be patient. Do not try to fly around the equipment too fast on the highways. Yes, wait. Let's pray for the peace in Jerusalem and uh, pray for our allies, the Israelites. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We're called to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and the surrounding region as they seek to continue to struggle, as we often do, unfortunately, to live together in peace. Some notable birthdays have taken place, or are happening, and uh, so uh, we, we give thanks for Miss Shelley and for all that she does for all of you, for all of us together. And then, um, now the name slips my mind, I know you made a note that there would be have a 95th birthday happening. Florence Boyd. Florence Boyd. So, uh, you have the opportunity to slip her a note and agree, I'm sure that would be a blessing to her. Let's pray together. Almighty, glorious God, we thank you and praise you on this day for the opportunity to live and to know your love and presence calling forth in us the fullness of purpose, the joy of having your great salvation, being able to extend to others that call to life and mercy that we receive in Jesus Christ. Lord, we know that there's so much that we bring before you that would be an overwhelming burden if it were for us to have to face things alone. But this day we remember that our Lord and Savior, your Son, Jesus, has ascended 
and is at your right hand in glory, exercising authority. And so we come to you, as we've been told, in his name, seeking the power of your spirit, the movement of your glorious wisdom among us. We do pray, gracious Father, for peace. We pray especially for the peace of Jerusalem, for the nation of Israel. We pray for those that they struggle with. Lord, we know that there are many things that can divide us, that often cause us to see only our differences. We pray that instead you would help us to have a vision of you high and lifted up, glorious, that we might remember that as your creation, we are called to bow down and worship and to see in one another that you are our God. We come to you seeking peace and reconciliation, healing and hope, where it often seems that there seems to be little hope. We pray for those who are facing similar issues in their own personal lives, oh God. We pray for those who are sick. We lift up those on our prayer list and we remember the struggles and the hardships that many are facing. We pray that the precious presence of your Spirit would fill each heart and mind with the joy of your love for them. And that as we have opportunity in our own expressions of love and compassion, that we would remind and lift up one another before you and in person or in phone calls or notes, encouraging each other to press on in your goodness. We lift up Lori Gonzalez, as Marcia mentioned. We pray especially in this coming week for her as she goes through this procedure. Give her strength, comfort, assurance of your presence with her. Guide those who will be caring for her. We pray that your Holy Spirit will be moving mysteriously in power to bring her through this time in healing and strength. We do pray for all who are seeking to continue to be good stewards of the land and providing and, uh, the food for a harvest that we look forward to. We pray for wisdom and insights and making decisions about whether to replant and how to move forward in finishing up in those fields that continue to be challenging because of the rains. And may we all continue to be patient, remembering together that whether we are actually in that work or not, we all share together in the mutual abundance of the creation you've given us. So we share together as well in the responsibility to be good stewards. Lord, we lift up to you our prayers as well for those in leadership, the nations of this world in our own local community. We ask for your mercy and your favor. We continue to guide and empower your spirit. Even in those that may seem to us to be far from you, you have shown us that you work in the lives of those who even seem to be adversaries. And so we ask that you would continue to do that which you have promised. And we ask that you would help us to be faithful in our covenant to one another and to you in sharing good news, the love of Jesus Christ each day. May your mercy continue to flow through us and overflow with joy and gladness. We ask all of these things and more in the precious, wonderful name of Jesus, who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
by one another, and to remember our own needs, our own challenges, as well as our own joys and strengths. So it's a privilege to be able to continue to do ministry together, and we thank you for your ongoing engagement in sharing the good news of Jesus, beginning in Jerusalem to the ends of the earth. We haven't quite made it, but we're still pressing on. Our noisy offering uh, this uh, period of time is going to Midwest Mission Distribution, which is a great resource, as most of you all know, in helping us to do that. Um, they've been reminding us that a big part of their focus right now, and in addition to, of course, supporting folks with storms that are happening, uh, many throughout the South and the West, uh, uh, they're big part of their focus continues to be finding ways to help folks in India. So if you're able to help in any way, uh, just drop that in the red buckets. And we, of course, appreciate your ongoing support for the church. Um, anybody decide to go to camp yet? Yes? All right. Good deal. Don't forget that a big part of your support through the church enables folks to go to camp, and uh, we appreciate being able to help do that again this year, and we're excited that some of the youth are planning on going. Any of the adults going to camp? Nobody, none of the adults have signed up yet? No? No? Well, there are a few possibilities there if you decide you'd like to. Let's pray together. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for blessing us. Lord, in our own lives, as we were just singing, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, stand in the need of prayer. We also know, Lord, we have received bountiful blessing of love and mercy, investment in our lives. We praise you, thank you, for those who have believed that we were worth giving and sharing and teaching. Lifting up, given, being given opportunities to learn to step forward, to swing a bat, to share in leadership in some way, in a new way, to serve, to offer a helping hand. Lord, help us to continue to know the ways in which we can bless and honor you and bless others. We praise you and give you glory. In Jesus' name and for the salvation of other lives. Amen.
just a couple of things that Pastor Paul started saying. Um, most of you know I'm involved with Project Nehemiah, um, which is in India. I talked with Rod and Laura just a couple days ago about the situation with COVID and the orphanage over there. And he said, so far, the kids have been safe, but the teachers, a lot of the teachers and the, the um, sponsors have, have gotten sick. And, and he said, you don't go to the hospital because you get sicker at the hospital. Um, and only special people get treated at the hospital. So people are much safer at home. Um, so he asked for prayers for the Project Nehemiah and their staff especially, but continued protection for the kids also. And then the other thing was Midwest Distribution Center, uh, something I'd like to add there, and I probably mentioned this before, that our Aunt Bert, Dale's Aunt Bert, who is 94, continues to sew for Midwest Distribution Center. She started when COVID started, um, and we were going to be doing something else, but when, well, when COVID started, I started making masks, and so she stayed with doing stuff for Midwest Distribution Center, mainly diapers, uh, cloth diapers, cloth sanitary pads, and um, school bags. She's probably made close to a thousand of these things combined. Uh, I cut them out for her, and then she sells them. And every time I take the things and visit with her, I say, Aunt Ruth, if you're getting tired of this, you don't have to do this. Bring them on, she says. <laughs> so she just loves it. And uh, I just, if you ever see her out on her little red cart, <laughs> going to Dave's uh, or to the, and she goes for breakfast now uh, at lost in time. Anyway, uh, give her a heads up and, and thank you for what she's done. It's, it's just been amazing. <coughs> okay, sorry about that, but wanted to get that in. So. And the scripture this morning is from Luke uh, 24, and it's 44 uh, through 53, and it is about Christ's ascension. Now he said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that Christ should suffer and rise again from the dead the third day. And the repentance for forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning with Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending forth the promise of my Father upon you, that you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came about that while he was blessing them, he parted from them. And they returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising God. Thank you, God, for the written word that you have given us. Thank you, Cheryl. Lord, we do thank you for your word you've given us. Though we each might confess that at times we struggle, we know that your word is inspired by you and it is profitable for teaching, for correction, for training in righteousness. That we can be the people of God equipped for every good work. And as Jesus said, that we might have streams of your living water that flow forth from us because of the work of your spirit and the refreshing teaching of your word. So we ask that you would do this in us today, that we might glorify you and be of great benefit in sharing the gospel with others. In Jesus' name, amen.
When you think about the ascending, the ascended, and glorious Christ, we have this beautiful stained glass window over here of the ascension. You know, I, I, one of the emails that I read every day that comes from Seedbed, which is a ministry uh, out of Tennessee, connected with Asbury uh, Seminary in Kentucky, uh, J.D. Walt had written a while back, I think maybe a few of you have been getting his emails as well, which anyone can, if you like some good encouragement every day, those are great, certainly commend them to you. Uh, he was writing about how the Ascension is probably one of the least observed and celebrated great, wondrous experiences in the Christian faith. And it struck me, he's right. The Ascension, I, I've learned this a long time ago, but honestly didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it. A lot of us don't give any thought to the Ascension. In fact, when you mention the Ascension, a lot of folks don't even know what you're talking about. <clears throat> and uh, that should, of course, never be meant to be demeaning to anyone unless we have the opportunity to learn, the opportunity to be exposed to what God is doing in these great moments, we're probably not going to know. Uh, but you hopefully remember, as we just read in the scriptures, uh, there was this great promise as Jesus was spending time with his disciples prior to the crucifixion, as he was trying to teach them, teach us, of the necessity of his obedience and his faithfulness in choosing to do what the Father had asked him to do in his pre-existent glory, that in coming he chose to give his life as a ransom to pay the penalty, the sacrifice that is necessary for each of us, for all of humanity, for us to be able to be declared righteous, not because God is a wrathful God who has to somehow be repaid, but for us to be transformed. And humanity had been wrestling with trying to seek to make ourselves better. And of course we can't do that. It's, it's kind of like uh, the, uh, even though we may think it's humorous at times, it's kind of like the experience of watching a young child who has never had the opportunity to practice, never had the opportunity to work at or be taught, uh, try to shoot the basketball through the hoop or swing a bat or to catch a ball. Um, we, we sometimes chuckle at the attempts and maybe in some ways they are humorous, but to lay upon them the expectation. Like the other night, Nancy and I were, were at a ball game and uh, ran into to Cheryl. She was going to watch their granddaughter play also. Uh, and listening to one of the parents calling out to the kids to hit it over the fence. Well, of course, that's, that'd be great. But uh, for, for the young boy that was being asked to hit it over the fence, that was kind of like having a burden placed on your shoulders uh, and expecting too much. Well, in a more serious manner, that's where we find ourselves without Jesus Christ. Knowing that we've been created by God for a glorious relationship of life, also knowing, even if we don't admit it, knowing, as mental health professionals, though we don't name it in religious terms these days, but profess that we all are aware of our struggles, of our weaknesses, of our challenges in life. And knowing that we've been created for the glory and the wonder of the life that we should have in God's relationship with us, yet also knowing that we don't have that life. And so Jesus, faithfully, obediently, the Son of God, chose to become the person Jesus, to come and to make it possible for us to literally swing for the fences through his glory, through his righteousness, through his goodness. 
and to find joyful, truthful fulfillment in what Jesus makes possible. The ascension, Jesus was promising his disciples, as they, they said, you, you know, as they had seen Jesus do amazing things, things that no one else had done, giving speech to those who couldn't speak, raising the dead, healing lepers, restoring folks who were in troubled emotional and spiritual states that no one else could restore. They knew Jesus was amazing and could do great things. And so when he began to talk about the reality of his death, the crucifixion, even though there was this dying awareness of the need, what happens afterwards? It's kind of like what we've been talking about uh, as we began worship, and even as we were talking in our sharing of our prayer concerns, what about the changes in life? How fearful, truthfully, it must have been for the disciples Especially after the resurrection, as glorious and wondrous as that was, to hear Jesus begin to talk about leaving. <clears throat> Here they thought things were just getting going again, and now you're, you're going to leave? One of the difficult to understand realities of the ascension, however, as Jesus unfolds it for them, and as the scripture helps us to unpack it, at least enough to be able to place our faith in him, because again, we still live by taking that step of faith each day in Jesus Christ, is that as Jesus ascends to the right hand of the presence of God, he's no longer bound by the physical place in which he is on earth. He's able to do what he had said he would do. Send God's Holy Spirit that can hover over all of the earth. That can work wooing and drawing even unbelievers to become more and more aware of God and of God's purposes for their lives. And to indwell those of us who have called upon the name of Jesus with power, with the power of Jesus Christ. To be able to do the ministry that we have been called and equipped and privileged to be able to enter into and in which we couldn't do without the power of Christ. The ascension marks that transition of the earthly presence of Jesus to the rightful heavenly place of Jesus. In the scripture uh, that Cheryl read, there's reference, and I'm going to just share with you a couple of points in, in Daniel chapter 7. Daniel, who was living five, six hundred years before the earthly presence of Jesus, was given this inspiration by God's Spirit, where he says, I looked and I saw thrones placed, and one that was ancient of days took his seat. His raiment was white as snow. And the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames. Its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousand served him. And ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court sat in judgment. And the books were opened. I looked then. Because the sound of the great words which the horn was speaking. And as I looked, the beast was slain. Its body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire. As for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away, but their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man. And he came to the ancient of days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. You can also read in Revelation, as many of you have, 
and, and read of the exaltation of Jesus, the Son of God, to that place of authority. And what's interesting, and, and we should take to heart as we hear these words of Scripture given by God's Spirit to people in vastly different times, different circumstances, different eras, is the fulfillment of this in the ascension of Jesus Christ to the glory of God. And, and of course, we still have our, our foot kind of ready to step through that door of next Sunday, 10 days after the ascension, which was Thursday, Pentecost, when the followers of Christ, 120 of them, and then quickly thousands of them, begin to discover that it was all true. Begin to discover the empowerment that Jesus had been talking about. And so as we live into this, it's not just history. Because it's true for us as well. No matter how many years separate us from these moments when God acted decisively for all of humanity, for every human being, there continues to be decisive moments. Those moments when we have the opportunity to decide to confess the name of Jesus, to call upon the name of the Lord to share the good news of God's love and His mercy, His holiness, His righteousness, His salvation, so that all who believe, who call upon Him, can be saved. When we take those moments of stepping into the life that God makes available to us, and for many of us, there may be one or two that are profoundly significant, but the truth is that every day, we continue to choose to live into the glory and the wonder of Christ. Hopefully we've all had those opportunities to realize that as we relate especially to some of our saints in the faith, our brothers and sisters who've lived upon this life and this ministry much longer than we have. And, and we've seen them in the closing moments of life talk about their faith and their confidence in Jesus. Even as the physical body is giving out, if they continue to place their hope and their confidence in Christ Jesus, His power, assured that the Jesus who's been with them all throughout this life journey is going to continue to be faithful. We have these moments there that are almost kind of like bookends for life except that they're not static, but they're, they're there to continue to stand us up and help us to be firm and established in our confidence in Jesus Christ. To know that, as we so often struggle with, we don't have to do this alone. Talking about change. And we all wrestle with change. And even when life is going well, change is still happening. Sometimes we think life is just smoothly moving along, but we all will, again, be surprised or confronted with something facing us. And for most of us, it's, it's not difficult. <laughs> change is all around us these days, even though most of us don't have any trouble buying toilet paper nowadays. We might complain about the fact that the, the number of sheets on the rolls has been closely cut to half of what they used to be in many brands. Or maybe, do you remember what the price of gasoline was a year ago? And what it is today? Or the price of milk? Or, you know, we could just go on and talk about all the different things that have changed. You couldn't go to a baseball game a year ago. Fortunately, we can now many times. There's just so many things that are happening, and, and even on a more personal level. With school winding down, with those who are moving from one class to another, families, parents, as you're facing, uh, figuring out ways to 
plan for your summer and continuing to wrestle with some of the things that we know have changed and, and we have to continue to contend with. We continue to know that we're called to be faithful. <clears throat> Joshua. Joshua was faced with tremendous change. After Moses died, Joshua was called by God, chosen and set aside by Moses to be the one who would step forward and lead the people of Israel. Joshua was overwhelmed. In Joshua chapter 1, you can read the account of how he's wrestling with, what do I do? How do I lead this great people? And it seems almost simplistic, at least to me at times it does. This is what he was told. Be strong and courageous, being careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, has commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, and you have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. And then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. Jesus called his disciples to recognize how the word of God prophetically and personally in his presence with them and now in his ascension was demonstrating in a real and personal manner God's willingness to be with them, to empower them, to work through them, to lift them up in their own personal walk with the Lord, but also to be people who are willing to go from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth, whatever that means. And we know that certainly not everyone in that discipleship community was running all over the place. There were those who were called to go forth as apostles and evangelists, and there were those who were called and equipped by God for the ministry of support and administration, for prayer and intercession, for meeting the needs of those who were sick, caring for the elderly, and on. But living into, through the power that God has granted to us, by faith in Jesus Christ, the fulfillment of this life in Christ. It struck me, Maybe this has happened to some of you too. Uh, I don't know. I, I could I could kind of go there with what Dale was sharing. Certainly in the case of my father, I can recall my father often having sleepless nights in, in the springtime. Um, today is uh, the anniversary of Nancy's father's birthday. And I'm sure that he probably had some sleepless nights too, wondering about whether to plant or replant or wait it out. Well, last night I had a period of sleeplessness, not because of planting, uh, but do you ever have a, a moment where you feel, for lack of different terminology, an attack of Satan, an attack of the evil one? I often reflect on Martin Luther, Martin Luther's experiences. Luther, in his time, when he was locked up not really locked up, but being protected at Bortberg Castle because his life uh, was wanted by the government and he was being protected by Frederick the Wise. In the, the cell, the, the little room where he lived in the castle, he wrote about how he often confronted, was challenged by Satan with temptations, with uh, discouragement, with him trying to convince him that he was failing, that he was worthless, that he was useless. And there's this great story, and it's evidently historically true, because you can visit the place and see the remnants of the spot on the wall where Luther threw his ink bottle at Satan, to banish him from bothering him. Uh, last night, I woke up at one point in time during the night, and I don't know where it came from, but I was just wrestling with oppression, the spiritual 
challenge in my life. I found myself saying those words said to Joshua over and over again. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. And then you shall be certain to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make the way prosperous. Then you will have success. Finding in Jesus Christ, finding in the Word of God, the Word made flesh, as well as the Word given to us, the revelation, as well as the Word experienced, the faithfulness of the body of Christ and His church, that affirmation, that reminder upon which we stand, that empowers us to face change, difficulties, what may be apparently insurmountable challenges at times. And that reminder that we don't go to these places, we don't face these giants, these evils alone. We're called to face them upon the power the ascended and glorious Christ. And there are those moments when the seemingly best we can do, and that's why Scripture can be so powerfully important in our lives, is to recall again and again those words of the Lord our God, the words of God's saints who have faced other challenges, other difficulties, Sometimes I think that make mine look puny. <laughs> Yet the same God, the same power of God's Spirit is present and available to us because of the ascended and the glorious Christ. I don't know everything you're facing today, but the Lord our God does. I'm not sure what all your resources are, and it's important for us, for us, of course, to share with brothers and sisters, to, to share our burdens, to share with one another in prayer. But there are also those things that sometimes we just, we feel that we just need to continue to face in the power of God's Spirit without maybe publicly sharing. But remember, remember that we are not facing these things on our own strength in our own resources, or at least we should be, we have access through God's promise and His presence to the power of Christ Jesus, the ascendant and glorious power of Christ. And today is a day that hopefully you all remember at least one or two ways in which you have seen that power manifested. Even if not in your own life, in the lives of folks who've been around you. Some of the folks who have been spiritual giants in your own life. Who would quickly tell you that it wasn't because of their great goodness or strength. It was because of God's faithfulness and the presence of the Spirit. And we're called to live into this so that we can continue to advance God's kingdom. For God's desire is for there to be peace in Jerusalem. And we're not there yet. God's desire is that the gospel be shared to all peoples. And we're not there yet. But don't let that be a burden. Instead, let that be a doorway that you and I choose to step through today. Saying that in the power of the risen Christ, we give ourselves fully to the invitation to swing for the fences. And to teach the simple things that are part of being able to make that connection. So that we can be faithful in this life to which we've been gifted and empowered to the grace of God. Let's pray together for a moment. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the ascension of Jesus, for the glory and the wonder, for the experience of those disciples who were there and who bore witness to seeing Jesus Ascend into the heavens and then see two angels standing there who told them, why are you so amazed? This is something you were told. Jesus has gone to the right hand of glory. He's coming back. Lord, we thank you for telling us and showing us these things. And in our own life, each of us today, Lord, we have seen your power. We've seen your glory. 
certainly we've seen things that make us question and doubt as well. But don't ask us to conquer life on our own. You call us to give ourselves and to receive from you through giving of ourselves the fullness of new life in Jesus Christ, the power of your spirit, and the faithfulness of being people of Jesus. So we pray that you will work through us and empowering us and helping us to share that glorious good news that we know. That even on the most dismal morning that we might ever face, we can know the glory of your presence. Just as on the most beautiful sunny morning, folks can be trapped in hopelessness without Jesus. So we pray for you to use us, to lead us, and empower us. In Christ's name, amen. <clears throat> Why well, don't I invite you to stand and praise God? And uh, as we do so, if you want, if you need, God's placed on your heart, you need to take a few moments and just be in prayer, then of course do that. Um, I understand from previous pastors that this particular hymn is one that sometimes gets pumped up. So if, if you want to be pumped up for this hymn, you're welcome to do so. Victory in Jesus, our Savior.
glory. One day we get to bow before him and praise him with all the saints. Until then, we are privileged to share his love and mercy with one another and with those we meet. So go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and let us be glad.